Hello, everybody. Welcome in. We are now streaming live in the Facebook group. We're going to do a fun Saturday session. So how's everybody's Saturday going? Oh, hey, Jody. We have Nuria. We have Linda. We have Michelle. Oh, my gosh. Michelle, how are you? What's up, you guys? How's your Saturday going? Are you guys ready to do some EKG practice where we cover the 10-step system? So let me make sure we're in the right group. And make sure we're in the right group and that we are live. You guys can see me and hear me okay, hopefully. Yay. Hey, Michelle. Where are you? I am in my sewing room. I'm finishing oh, up my quilt. <laughs> totally recognize where you are. Okay. <laughs> okay. We are good. All right. Hey, everybody on Facebook. Hey, everybody in Zoom. We'll get started in just one minute. And um, I am really excited because if you got to join us for any part of the three day EKG challenge, then you started to get some momentum and you learned about EKG terminology. You learned about basic rhythms. You learned a little bit about 12 leads. So today's session is designed to get you more confident and comfortable in getting starting to practice the system, right? Because you have to learn the basics before you can go on. So let me pull up my slides. Do, 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 do. Okay, so slideshow. Slideshow from current. All right. Awesome. So let's make sure we record just in case anybody misses and wants to watch later. Record cloud. So officially welcome into our bonus session where we're going to take um, an EKG. Oh, hey, Stephanie. Hey, Thu and hey, Lisa on Facebook. We're going to take an EKG and walk through it step by step because I think that's something that we often are lacking. You know, sometimes what we end up doing in EKG classes is we jump from EKG terms, arrhythmias, and then right into 12 leads, but we don't really spend a whole lot of time breaking them down in a systematic fashion. So I think that's the piece that's missing is that practice because I found I would start to get some traction and understanding it. And then really I needed, you know, I really just needed more somebody guiding me like, Hey, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? Like a touch point. And so that's what this is going to start to be for you using this one EKG. Now, if you went to night three, and again, all these replays are still available, but if you went to night three, you got to work with Michelle and she taught you the clock system. So we're going to kind of use that, not, not all the components of it, but we'll use that to go through the EKG and we'll talk about the things to look for. So you guys ready to get started? Hopefully it's now five o'clock on the dot. Welcome in Melanie Ash and Leah and Carrie and Lisa. Yay, I'm glad you're here. Lisa's in the ambulance watching. I love that. Um, I miss being on the bus. I'll come do a ride along with you, Lisa. All right, so let's talk about the CKG first. I'm gonna show you this just because um, here's what happens to a lot of people when they're learning EKGs. So they'll say, or they'll think, and this, I was completely guilty of this too. They'll be like, oh, um, I'm all good. I've got my, you know, if it's serious, I'll know it. And if it's normal, I'll know it. And so the rest of the stuff, it really doesn't matter. So type in the chat if you've ever thought that, or if you sort of thought, oh, maybe I'll just rely on the machine to really show me what's wrong because the machine is smarter than I am. <laughs> well, it turns out that no, actually, those things are really, really wrong. And the reason why is because hardly ever are you going to see this in your clinic setting, okay? And hardly ever are they going to be normal. There's going to be all this gray area that you need to sort through, right? It's that gray area stuff, like non-specific ST T-wave changes, that really is going to be the things that will bite you. But I put this up first because I wanted to use it to demonstrate that, yes, I think everybody could look at this EKG and know that there's a STEMI here. Now we're not gonna cover STEMI criteria in depth right now, but um, the decision you have to make, right, is if this is a STEMI or not. So when you go to the first step, which is big, sick, little, sick, that's the first step always, right? This would be a big, sick. And you wouldn't do anything else if it's a big, sick, except for figure out if it's real or not. You don't need the 10 step system. The last thing we want you to do is to be over here like, 
is there a P wave? There's not, by the way, but we don't want you like hunting for it. And I don't know, this looks like maybe it's a heart block down here. No, 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 no. When you have a STEMI accusation, you must stop and grab something to draw with if you need that help. And honestly, it's okay to need that help and to go over and see if you have elevation or depression and in what leads. Now I'm just drawing along the isoelectric line, okay? And right now what's popping up is that I have at least one small box in lead three and AVF, okay? These are contiguous, meaning fed by the same artery. We learned that on the first night. And then I need to go look for some reciprocal changes, which means changes that are on the opposite side of the heart or opposite mirror image of the heart. So that would be in, for this case, one in AVL. And I do have what is called reciprocal ST depression. So for a STEMI to be true, I do need to have two leads with elevation that are in the same area. And then I do need to have two leads with depression that are reciprocal. So we call it the two and two. You'll see me do this in class all the time, two and two. So this is a STEMI. So now we just need to send them to the emergency department, right? However you do that. Now, if any of you are also like, well, you know, Jen, while you were looking at that, I, my eye was just over here and I was looking at, you know, all this other depression and I, and I was like really noticing that Jen. And I, you know, I was also really concerned that there's no P wave and all that stuff. Well, here's, here's two things I have to tell you. A, yes. This could be multivessel disease, and it probably is, because it, when you what it will teach you in our thirty day EKG challenge, if you join us, is that you you have contiguous leads, and for example, two, three, and F. So if you have changes over here, these are not the same artery, right? So it could be something wrong in the other artery. But here's the good news: you've already determined it's a STEMI, so you're off the hook. You don't need to worry about it because they're going to go to the cath lab. So they'll figure it out if it's if it's there or not, right? And they'll also deal with the rate issues. Now, let's talk about this though, because here's where I really think that the fun comes in to learning about EKGs. Because I, I, for a long time, did not think this was fun. I hated it, wanted to tear my hair out. I did a lot of crying. <laughs> like there was, it was bad because it's frustrating without someone to guide you. It's frustrating without like really understanding how this flat piece of paper corresponds to the heart, but here's what's cool, okay? When you get a sneak behind the scenes here, what you start to understand, you're like, okay, well, gee, if the two, three, and F are fed by the right coronary artery, and I also know that the right coronary artery feeds the sinus node, then I, oh my gosh, I know I'm gonna watch for bradycardia. Well, I do have bradycardia. And if I also know that it feeds the sinus node and if my right coronary artery is attacked and my sinus node is not fed, then of course I'm gonna not have a P wave because the P wave is made by the sinus node. And so then you're like, oh, well, of course, right? Isn't that sort of neat to put that together and how it sort of like, like Michelle says, how you can almost hear the heart talking to you. And I just wanted to kind of go back to that for a second because the machine is saying, remember how, right? We talked about how it's inaccurate, the stuff up here, six to 42% of the time, the machine thinks that this is AFib, okay? It thinks it's AFib with a slow ventricular response because it sees some grouped beats down here. And grouped beats for you, right? You've always been taught, oh, well, it's, you know what? It's a heart block, but this can't be a heart block because there's no P wave. So there's a lot of things that really, when you get down to it, here's the secret. You cannot memorize everything about the EKG and be good at it. You have to understand it. And then you'll never, never be led astray because when you see that at the bottom knowing, oh, well, I, heart block, always going to have a P, always going to have QRS. Sometimes there's going to be more Ps, right? If there isn't a P, it's not a heart block, it's something else. So just know that it's almost like playing detective and, and walking through it. But not to dive too much in the deep end, I do want to start back into our shallow end um, in just one second. 
we're going to go to the stepwise, but I really wanted to just drive home something. Okay. Hey, Matt. Hey, KJ. Um, this EKG. Okay. So for those of you who are in that, that class of, oh, um, I know the big stuff. I, I got that STEMI just now, so I'm totally fine. And I know, you know, the normal, I know what normal looks like. Well, this is one of those gray areas because it says ST2 have abnormality. So I, I hope that all of you that are here know that this patient needs to go to the ER and why. Okay. I hope that you see why in five minutes after the CKG that this patient had a STEMI and went straight to the cath lab and got two stents. But if you don't know why, and you see STT web abnormality and you just refer to cardiology, that is not a safe bet. It is not going to do your patient any good. And you could lose your license by not knowing these things and your patient could die. If, if this wasn't spotted, this patient would have died. So at the end of the day, this EKG stuff, yeah, it's pretty high risk, but, but I have a way to share it with you. I have a way to show you that it can be easy. And the way we do that is we focus on patterns and high risk things. But before we can do that, we must do our 10 step and understand the basics. So that's why we structured our three day in a way where we start you with the basics. And now I'm gonna go back and you're gonna practice those basics. So then you can build up and go back and understand that last EKG, right? Because probably a lot of you don't still are like, well, wait, what was it, <laughs> right? So that was a complicated EKG, I'll admit. But let's do this one together. Let's do the same EKG and let's walk through the steps, baby steps, okay? And you can do this on your own. Like you could take this 10 step and go have EKGs in your clinic and you could practice this on your own and just see how it goes for you. You could totally do that. So let's start. So big sick, little sick. A lot of people said to me, they said, you know, Jen, when you say that, I don't really know what you mean. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> if you didn't used to work on the ambulance, I don't think that you ever taught this because it turns out it's an EMS thing. I just didn't know that. In <clears throat> an EMS school, well, in paramedic school, <laughs> he said, you got to be able to walk in a room and you got to be able to really identify you know, are you going to load and go? They would always take, are you going to stay and play? Right. And people that were really sick that you really couldn't fix like an MI, like you're not going to waste time on scene doing vitals and, you know, putting in an IV. It's like, no, get them in the bus and go to where someone can fix them because it's not us. Right. We can stabilize. We can't. So, so this concept I bring into EKGs, because if you have an EKG that says STEMI, right, like I just showed you, then that's big sick and you don't do the rest of the things. If you have maybe uh, a systole, that would obviously be, we don't need to do our 10 steps, right? If you have VFib, if you have VTAC, you're not doing your 10 steps. You're doing the thing that gets them to where they need to be, right? You're going to fix the problem. If they're super bradycardic and they're like nearly passing out, right? Then you're going to do the thing that need. But if they're not big sick, well, this patient, let me ask you, do you guys think, type in the chat, is this patient big, sick, or little sick? Is this patient big, sick, or little sick? What do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Big, sick, or little sick? We do have, it says, acute STEMI here. Acute STEMI. So I would argue that this is big, sick, right? It's, it's big, sick. Yeah, exactly. Linda says big, sick. And you're right, Linda. And so does Matt. So does KJ. Okay, awesome. So I agree. So work for this EKG, if this was real, what we would do is we'd come over here, we'd grab our little trusty pen and KJ is going to say it any second, I guarantee in the Facebook feed, KJ is going to say, draw your lines. Okay. So we're going to do that. We're going to draw our lines. Do we have ST elevation? Is it at least one small box? Yes. Is it in two contiguous leads? Yes. Okay. Over here, do we have depression? Yes. We have depression. Yes. So two, two, done. But let's just pretend that this was not a STEMI, okay? And we'll just keep using it to go along with our system, okay? Or let's first pretend EMS is on route to get the patient. So step two, um, well, we're not doing step two, right? We're, we see a STEMI accusation, so we're not doing any of our things. We're like, hey, hold on, right? But step two, 
would be look at the rate. So the rates up here, this is anywhere from, we want it to be 60 to 100. So 71 is normal. Okay, that's fantastic. So we can go to step three, okay? Step three is, is it regular or irregular? Hey, Lisa, um, draw your lines, KJ. Yeah, always draw your lines. It's really, really important. So rhythm, this is a fun one because I happen to pick one that's kind of a little bit difficult. Okay, so here's what the machine has selected for us. Um, it pulled out lead V1 from up here and it gave us the long lead strip so we could determine our rhythm. But, but, this is really hard to see if it's sinus or not. Like a lot of folks would say, oh, I don't know, maybe this is AFib. It's not AFib because first of all, we, were, we would ignore this because there's too much artifact. And we would go over to the most beautiful lead, lead two, to see if there's actually a P wave. And now you can see that there is, okay? So I have confidence that there are P waves. I have confidence this is not AFib. I see them in more than one lead. Um, so yes, this is a sinus rhythm, okay? And also if you're ever <clears throat> thinking that it's AFib, what do you do? You go over here and you, you can go, oh, is it regular or irregular? So that's literally how easy this is, okay? So we figured out that this is a sinus rhythm and it's not too fast, not too slow. And again, um, rhythm is really important and the intervals are as well. So here's the intervals and they are up here. Now these numbers have clues and those clues, let me just circle them for you. This is the intervals. These clues, for example, can show you if they have a prolonged QT, okay? So 713 is pretty prolonged, okay? And that's the QTC, the C stands for corrected, okay? That's, that's the corrected QT. Now, I have to say though, um, why are they negative? Why is what negative? Um, by the way, hi, Paul. But 713, um, if this was true, if this was true, what you would see is you would you can double check it by looking at your R to R and putting your line halfway down between. If your T wave is there, it is probably over 500, but your T wave is actually here. So 713 doesn't really make sense. And so what happened is that there's too much artifact on here and that is causing the machine to be faked out. So what's the story here? You have too much artifact, but these intervals, they are often calculated correctly, but sometimes they're not. So you really need to be able to know how to measure your own intervals. That's why some people have that RCAT badge because you can measure intervals that way as well. So when they repeated the EKG, this is the same patient, you can see without the artifact, you can see that beautiful T wave, it's right where it should be. And the QTC is 444. It should be below 460. Yes, good job, KJ. Um, it should be 460 or less in a female and 450 and less in a male. So in a nutshell, we had a normal QT, everything was fine. It was just too much artifact. So always double check that you don't have too much artifact and that you can actually see what you need to see. Because if you can't, then you need to get a different EKG where you can see what you can see, okay? So ST segments, we talked a lot about that already. Step five, looking at that as you go down, but if it ever says demi, you're moving that to the very top, okay? And then the sixth step is looking for Q waves. Okay, so what would a Q wave look like? A Q wave would look like you had a dagger hanging off right here. Okay, it would be a negative deflection on the beginning of the QRS complex. And if it was a third, the height of the R wave, it would be pathologic. Okay, so you'd be looking for that. And you're always making sure that your P and your QRS are married, meaning are they staying close together? And then there also is a number here that is axis, it is 31. And axis is supposed to be zero to 90. And axis really isn't that important in the grand scheme of things. Um, we use it in wide complex tachycardias and we use it sometimes when people we think have a PE, you'll see a rightward axis. But other than that, we're not using it a whole lot, but it's there, we'll note it and see what's going on. So 
uh, number eight, we're looking at the voltage. So does anybody remember with voltage, if it's, um, if it's high, what does that mean? Meaning if there's big R waves, what does that mean? If there's big R waves, because if it's really big, it means something. Also, if it's really small, it means something. So, cause that's part of our clues. So if it's really big, you're worried about hypertrophy. You're worried about thickening of the tissue. If it's really small, the R wave, you're worried about something being in the way. And the worst thing would be um, somebody having like a pericardial effusion, for example. And then the T waves, yes, exactly, exactly, Paul. The T waves are also really important. My arrow, I just realized it's not in the right place. So I'm gonna put an arrow in the right place. So actually let's do hearts. I like hearts better. Okay, the T wave rules. Remember that from night, I think it was night three, we talked about it. The T wave should be upright in all of the leads, except for two. And those are, they should be inverted, which this is an AVR, and it should be inverted in V1, okay? But it's it's actually upright. So that's not normal, okay? But every other, every other lead should have an upright T wave and it shouldn't be too big and it shouldn't be biphasic, okay? So you want everybody to be upright and the only two that are allowed to be inverted are AVR and V1. And then the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take the chief complaint-based approach. Now I added this in because yes, we've done all of our steps, but sometimes what we do is we forget what they complained of in the first place because we're so busy doing our steps. And if they complain of like syncope, for example, you have to go back into the EKG and look for certain specific things. So for example, you would look for brugadas in V1 and V2. For example, you'd look for a prolonged QT that could be leading to torsades. For example, you look for signs of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, which would be deep Q waves in certain leads or inverted T waves. So there's lots of other little things you have to add on per the complaint. For you know shortness of breath, you have to learn to also go back and look for the S1, Q3, T3. So there's lots of little nuances here based on their chief complaint. And of course, chest pain, you have to look for ST elevation, right? So palpitations, you gotta look for delta waves. There's all these little nuances that need to be added in on this layer. So that's the 10 step. So any questions so far on what we've covered or any questions at all? Um, looks like we have KJ and Matt on Facebook and we have everybody on Zoom with us. So what I'm gonna share with you now, if you're like scratching your head and you're like, well, I wanna learn about the S1Q3 T3 and I I wanna learn about, you know, what what are these little subtle things you're talking about? Um, cause I think it's important to my practice and I don't want to get risk of losing my license. We do have the 30 day EKG challenge and I didn't get a whole lot of chance to talk about it before since we were kind of rushed on night three, but this starts on Monday. So today's Saturday, it starts on Monday and we have, um, a good lineup actually coming up. So Monday we're going to do, and I'm going to show you the calendar real quick. Monday, we're going to do the welcome call where we show you around. We do more EKG terminology just to solidify that. Then we do some basic rhythms and in a kind of a mega code fashion, just to practice our basic rhythms with Sean. He's wonderful. And then Michelle, who you've met, um, she's going to do 12 lead basics where she does a whole hour and a half on showing you how everything connects. She shows you lead placement. She shows you what the leads look at. She color codes everything. It's a phenomenal, really visual, hands-on thing. She gives you a, a little um, worksheet to go with the class. And she gives that to you the night before. So it's very interactive, very hands-on. And then on the 18th, uh, David, who is our EKG expert, he'll be going over any EKGs you've submitted to, to him to go over, or he'll just pick a topic that's um, relevant and he'll do a whole hour on that. But you can ask questions, you can um, pick his brain. He's super, super smart. So those, con those contents of the study hall are always driven by our students, like what do they wanna see? So like he did one on the fourth. So when you join, you actually get to come in for six months. And this is the last time we're doing that till the end of the year. So this is the, this is the last opportunity to get in for a whole six months and get access to everything that we've done for the last three years, right? 
and you could just watch the live stuff. You can watch past stuff. Like you can do whatever you want. And then the 21st, which is Sunday, um, I'm going to be mailing you a box and the box is going to have a bunch of stuff in it, including the workbook that we're going to cover in this hands-on workshop. And this is where I'm going to teach you some basic concepts, but I'm also going to show you in the second hour, STEMI, the, in the last hour, we're going to do practice of the EKGs I send you. We're going to color code them, but I'm also going to show you the five high risk things that, um, when the machine says non-specific STT wave changes that you can't miss. Okay. I'm also going to share the new guidelines that came out for the new STEMI equivalents. That's all going to happen here. And it's recorded so you can watch it anytime. In fact, I've already done a version of this that's in the portal. And then Paul's asking a really good question. So can I upload the calendar to my Google calendar? So you know how you can do that, Paul, is you can go into the Facebook group, which I'll show you um, in a minute, and you could just add it to your calendar that way. You don't even have to do it this way manually. So cool. So anyway, uh, and then what you've learned in Michelle's class on the 17th, you're going to come and practice with her on the 23rd. And then we're going to do another high risk review on the 28th, which is Sunday. And then um, the 30th, I'm going to do a heart failure session, which I'm super excited because I know a lot of you've been asking for it. And then in May, we'll have a whole new schedule. June will have a whole new schedule and it will rotate around topics, but we'll keep practicing. Okay, so that's kind of just the lineup for the beginning of the month. So it's a yes, Lisa. Hi, I know it's been forever. <laughs> and then Matt, um, he's a so a coach in our launch pad, um, and he's here with us today. And so he actually, what I didn't tell you is that if you join our thirty day right now, this round, you're also going to get access to our EKG launch pad. The EKG launch pad. We're going to have sessions every Wednesday at four o'clock PST that are basic, basic, basic. So you get extra practice. So Matt just did our session last Wednesday, Matt and Michelle did, and it was phenomenal. Um, I'll be doing the one coming up the next two Wednesdays, I believe, um, in the launch pad, which is just an extra bonus. So it's it's really a lot of fun. But anyway, that's Michelle and I looking over this big EKG, wishing that um, <laughs> we had EKGs this big to look at. But yes, if you say going on the events as well, as Michelle just pointed out, it will remind you in Facebook, but you can put it on your Google Calendar and Facebook will remind you. So there's a whole list I'm actually working on putting together now that we have three years of classes. I'm putting together, um, it's almost ready, everything divided into what coach taught what. So like you can see all the classes that Megan did, all the classes that I did, all the classes that Michelle did, um, David's classes, Sean's classes, and you see everything, the classes listed. So you can see, oh, stress test, cool. I'm gonna go watch Whitney's stress test lecture. Or, oh, I need help on echoes. I'm going to go watch that one. Or I need help on Scarbosa's criteria. I'm going to go watch this. So there's all sorts of things you can watch in our library, basically, that you have access to as soon as you join, which is really cool. This is just a sample. Um, Jody, um, you joined the launch pad, which is not this. This is the 30-day EKG challenge. So the launch pad you're in every Wednesday night for the four weeks. So uh, we can talk offline more about that um, and we should definitely do that. So this is what you get when you sign up for the 30 day EKG challenge is what we're talking about. That's here. You get 12 hours of category one CME. You get access to both groups. Okay, so this is the learning portal that you get access to where your CE is. You get the group, but you also get the launch pad group. You get this kit filled with all the stuff, including a little badge to play with. Um, that's really fun. And then um, this is where all the classes are held. They're held in this group, but also on Zoom, just like this. It's basically just like this. And the prices are for student rate. If, if you don't need CE, you can join at the student rate, which you get six months in our group with us for 149. That's a steal. Getting to ask questions, getting help, getting access, right? That's really pretty awesome. EMS is only 149 for 12 hours. Um, RNs are 249 and NP and PA are 299. So remember that this is the last time that we've got this six months access till the end of the year. Now, I think Paul just asked me, so I want to show you guys. Um, let me go to our group and I want to show you how to make those happen for yourself. Okay. So let's go to home. So the events, when you get into the 30, um, do, 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 do. for some reason it's not coming up for a regular way to look at it. Oh, maybe this way. 
There we go. Okay. So you go to the 30 and you go to events. I think you can see. Yeah. Okay. So you go to events and you'll see that there's the welcome call with me, which is happening at 5.30 PST on Monday. So you can go over here. Well, first of all, as Michelle said, you click going and then Facebook reminds you, but you can also go here and you can say add to calendar right here. Easy. That's how you do it, Paul. And so then you have all your events in here and inside the event, when you open it up is the Zoom link, if you wanna join by Zoom. So these are all listed here, all the stuff we have planned for the month. Um, they're all here already. So when you get in the group, that's where you go. Now the guides is where they go when the classes are done. So once you've had um, a class in the 30 day, it'll go up into the, for example, April, they'll all go into this guide. So there's May where we did um, hypertension cases and practice, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. We did arrhythmias and heart blocks. We did um, arrhythmia challenge. Oh, let's see what else do we do. And you can just keep going January, right? You can see what we did in January. Left heart cath demo. Um, let's see what else. Practice on Wellen syndrome. Scenarios, ACLS scenarios, like long haul talk. Long haul COVID talk, think like a pacemaker, device update, lateral wall practice, common chief complaints, how to work up palpitations, like sleep apnea, all of this stuff. There's so much stuff in this group, right? Yeah, easy peasy, Paul. So then, and then you'll get into a section called files. So files will have everything that uh, we've put in this group that's a PDF. So for example, let's just say, um, you wanted to, so David just did a study hall called Pesky Pacemakers, where he went over um, how to, you know, look at rhythms despite a pacemaker. And he put a PDF in here. You can download that, right? Um, you can download the, the presentation associated with hypertension. Um, there's an EKG terminology PDF that if we're going to be meeting on Monday, you'll download and you can follow along. Um and then Michelle, this is one of the things Michelle will, will hand out for you guys to print out for her class on Wednesday. And then I even have um, a soap notes, that, a lecture, how to write a soap note. Um, basically, there's all sorts of stuff in this file section. This is the clock 10 step that Michelle does. It's in here. You can have that. There's also epic dot phrases that I put together that you can steal. Um, so those are kind of fun. But literally, there's just like, so much stuff in here. I can't even begin to tell you. So anyway, yeah, isn't that helpful to see where things are? And then you also get, let me share with you this one. I think you can see, you also get access to the learning portal. So that's what this looks like. I'm going to make sure you guys can see it. Yes, you can. Okay. So the learning portal is where you'll get your CE. So um, the things that are in here, so if you're joining just for the 12 hours, this is literally all you need in here for the CE. You watch the things in here and then you can fill out your forms and we get your, your CE. Now, the cool thing if you, if you join during April is that at the end of May, we're changing over the CE. So it'll be a whole nother different CE number, different CE classes in here. And so you'll have a chance to get 12 hours of this one and then I think it's going to be 15 hours next time. So just by joining for this, for, you know, this time, this time, you'll be super lucky because you'll end up getting all that. Now, one last thing I want to show you just before we wrap up is this is the kit that I mail out to you that you get when you sign up, no matter what level you sign up at. This is the EKG workshop kit. And basically this is um, inside of it is some toys, some presents, some gifts. So you're going to get the bigger version of the badge, which has more yummy stuff on it. This is called the MI window. And you can bring it to the class or the archive window, sorry. Um, you can bring it to the class and use it on our, our 12 lead sessions for this red line to look to see if there's elevation. You get a, an EKG that I call the normal EKG. And we use this to color code and carve up our EKG so we can learn. And this is the explanation on how to use this. So there's an explanation sheet in case you need guidance. There is also a cheat sheet, but I won't show it to you because I don't want to give away all my secrets, but I give you a cheat sheet on access and all the other things that are people are scared of um, in the box, along with this workbook that we have. So this workbook 
It's really cool, actually. Like it has real EKGs in it. You can see real EKGs. They're not like canned EKGs that are out of a book somewhere. And the cool thing is that we're going to go over these in that workshop on the 21st so that you get really um, confident and comfortable with EKGs and you're practicing hands-on. We give you crayons so you can color code on the EKG and um, you still get a painting, a little mini painting. Um, on an easel that gets sent in your package. So all of this comes to you in your little um, box, your little welcome kit. And then basically we just jump in and have a good time. So if you want to join us, um, I'll be posting the link um, in the Facebook group. I think it's actually already dropped, but it'll be dropping soon. If you want to join us, go ahead and click in. It is so much fun. I can't even explain to you how much support you will get. And that's the missing piece with the education that's out there right now, because you can read a book, but I guarantee every one of you have read a book right now on EKGs, but you still are struggling. I was like that too. I guarantee you've gone on YouTube or websites and watched some things and you've been like, okay, this is great, but I just don't understand this part, but you don't have a human to ask. That's where this program comes in. It's a hybrid. You have recorded pieces you can watch. You have humans that can help you, like that you can like, ask questions too. And then you can also, um, you know, have live classes to go to and interact. So it's really, really a fun thing. Um, and a great group of people. I love everybody that is in our group so much. So that's all I have for you today. I wanted to keep it kind of short since it's Saturday, but you can also private message me if you have questions. There is something in the chat. Let me take a look and see. Yes. Michelle says the painting is worth it. I agree, Michelle. Thank you. But anyway, we hope to see you inside. Um, this is the last, if you're wanting to join for six months, this is your last opportunity to do that because it's going to change after this time to a shorter duration. Um, so if you're like on the fence, this is the time to do it. So we'd love to see you in Monday. And if you have any questions in the meantime, let me know. And I will see you guys hopefully Monday in the welcome call. All right, bye guys.